The mineral property cleavage is looking at how a mineral breaks. A mineral with cleavage is going to break along flat planes, whereas a mineral that does not have cleavage will break along uneven fracture surfaces. So let's first look at this in a little bit of detail. So here we have two minerals. Both have very flat faces, which is one of the things that we're going to look for for cleavage because we want to see minerals that have flat faces breaking along flat planes. One of them has cleavage, this sample that is much larger. One of them does not have cleavage. What this means when we look at the smaller sample is the flat faces that we are seeing are how the mineral grew. And again, in cleavage, we're interested in how the mineral breaks. And why did I put on the safety glasses? The only true way to test cleavage, which we will not do in the classroom, is to actually break the sample. So when I take this nice hexagonal prism, six-sided, elongated like a pencil crystal, and I hit it, if it had cleavage, it would break into pieces of the same shape. What we're going to see is that when I hit it with the hammer, the pieces have fractured into random shapes and into little glass-like shards. This tells us, again, that's how the mineral grew, not how it breaks, which is cleavage. I take this sample that has a nice cubic shape to it, three sides at 90 degrees. You can see the nice 90-degree corner right there. Because it has cleavage when I hit it with the hammer, you can see that it broke along nice flat planes to keep that 90 degree cleavage on every sample that broke because it cleaves or breaks along planes. What we're going to look for when we're identifying cleavage is two things. We're going to look for identifying the number of planes and the angle between them. To do this, we look at a sample that has cleavage. To identify the number of planes, we're going to look for two things. The first are called stair steps, which you see in quotations because they're not actual stair steps, but that's what they look like. And the second thing we're going to look for are bursts of light off flat surfaces. So when I hold a sample up, for you to see, we can see a burst of light, and we can also see it on this sample, white light reflecting very rapidly off the surface rather than kind of waxing across it. We're really looking for that pop or burst of light coming off of there. Uh, that tells us it's a flat surface. We're getting that burst of light even if it's at, and it's kind of hard to see, it's at two different levels. You can see a level up here and then it steps down and there's the second level down here. So burst of light telling us nice, flat, cleavage-like plane. And then the stair step is telling us it likes to break along that plane even if it's at different heights on the surface of the mineral. So in order to tell how many planes, we have to look at how many sets of parallel faces there are. The top and bottom are parallel to each other. Even though that's two sides, that counts as one cleavage plane because they're parallel. The left and the right are also parallel to each other. Again, even though it's two sides, that's one plane, making two so far in the mineral. And then we look at the front and the back. They are also parallel. And again, it's two sides, but that's one plane. So this sample would have three planes, the top and the bottom, the left and the right, and the front and the back. When we look at minerals and cleavage, the first thing that we have is no cleavage. For an option. This means the mineral does not break along any flat planes within it. It <coughs> excuse me, fractures along uneven surfaces. It means the bond strength is the same in all directions within the mineral. If you have a weakness or a weaker bond within the mineral, that's the plane along which it will break. So again, we had that nice crystal, we hit it with a hammer, we get random shapes rather than the same shape repeating over and over. The first type of cleavage that we will see in a mineral is called basal cleavage. This is where minerals split along one cleavage plane and they break into sheets. So when you look at the mineral, you should see it's very flat like a sheet and you should be able to pull it apart 
like sheets of paper into flat sheet-like pieces, showing you one cleavage. Because there's only one plane in basal cleavage, we do not need an angle, because we need at least two cleavage planes to make an angle. The first cleavage with more than one plane that we will see is prismatic. Prismatic is where there are two cleavage planes intersecting at varying angles. So depending on what mineral is, different minerals will have different angles. So if we look at a sample that has prismatic cleavage, we'll see a cleavage plane on the surface. This is where another mineral stuck to it. It should be this white gray all across. But we're getting a burst of light off the top. We are getting a burst of light which is hard to see because of the lightness of the mineral, off of this side. And then we look at the third face for the set of sides, and we're not seeing any burst of light coming off that. That means it has one cleavage plane on the top and bottom, one on what is the left and right as I'm holding it, and there is not cleavage, and you can feel it's uneven, it's rough, it's a little powdery, on the third face that is not a cleavage plane. In order to measure the angle of cleavage when we have more than one face, we have what is known as a guniometer, or an instrument for measuring the angle between the faces. And what you do to measure cleavage, you can see that this mineral has cleavage, it's not at 90 degrees, is that we push the mineral into the corner of the guniometer, and what you want to be very careful about is that you want to make sure you have the face of the ruler the flat part here against the face of the mineral. You don't want it to be off of the mineral because that's going to change your angle. What students often do is they push until they get all the way in the corner and then they look at the guniometer but what they're not paying attention to is they've actually pushed too far and it's off the face. So we want to make sure that the side of the ruler is flat against the face of the mineral because when you have it that way you will get the cleavage of the mineral. This one is showing at 105 which means the other angle is 75, because in cleavage the angles will always add up to 180 degrees. The third cleavage we have to look at is cubic, and just like the name sounds, this means there are three cleavage planes intersecting each other at 90 degrees. The bigger the sample, the more difficult it is for cleavage to be expressed or exposed. So this sample has cubic cleavage, we can see something close to 90 degrees on this side, and we can see three flat planes, but when it gets to this side, we're not seeing that perfect cube. Uh, the smaller the piece, the better it's exposed. So when we look at this piece, we're seeing that nice cubic shape no matter what way we look at it. So when you're looking at cleavage in this video, you're seeing some of the best examples. When we start to get into the lab and actually getting your hands on these, Samples will have cleavage that will not be nearly as clear as what you're seeing in this video. It's something that takes practice, and ultimately the best thing to do is to hit it and break it. Unfortunately, we can't do that in the lab. So asking your instructor about it may be a good step to help determine when you're looking at these the first time especially. Does the sample have cleavage? Is that what I'm seeing, or am I seeing something else? The next cleavage to look at is rhombohedral. Rhombohedral is three cleavage planes intersecting at an angle other than 90 degrees. <coughs> so, excuse me, for us, when we're looking at it, again, the sample that we just measured with the guniometer, here we're looking at a sample, and you can see the kind of parallelogram shape. We have one set of cleavage for the top and bottom for planes, the second plane on the left and right, and the third plane on the front and the back. Again, when we took the guniometer on here, we figured out that the acute angle is 75 degrees, the obtuse angle is 105 degrees. Rhombohedral, think parallelogram, uh, so this has rhombohedral cleavage. The next cleavage that we will see is octahedral. Octa makes you think eight because it has eight sides. Uh, each side is parallel to another, which eight divided by two then is four. We are looking at four cleavage planes that are intersecting at 71 and 109 degrees. When you see this in the lab, it will not be very well exposed. However, we do have some samples that show this extremely well. Uh, this is our state mineral fluorite. These have not been cut or polished. They were taken out of a mine, and this is exactly how they look. Here you can see it's a pyramid shape, so one, two, three, 
four faces on the top and then four matching faces on the bottom. Eight sides, because the faces are matching, that's where you get the four, one, two, three, four cleavage planes, again intersecting at 71 and 109 degrees, making that nice octahedral or eight-sided shape. The last cleavage that will be next to impossible to see, uh, especially when we're looking at the lab samples that have been beat up over time, is dodecahedral. Dodecahedrons are 12-sided, again pairs of matching faces or parallel faces, 12 divided by 2 gives us 6 cleavage planes intersecting at 60 and 120 degrees. Now I'm going to show you a sample that has the uh, dodecahedral or 12-sided shape, although it's also hexagonal. Uh, this isn't cleavage, so uh, I'm just trying to show you uh, a mineral that has the 6 faces that you could see. 1, 2, 3, and then on the top 4, 5, and 6. When we look at dodecahedral cleavage in the lab, again, it'll be next to impossible to see. Uh, so sometimes cleavage is a great diagnostic property. You can see it really well exposed in some minerals. Uh, they have nice flat faces, the burst of light. Other samples when you're looking at cleavage, uh, this is a prismatic cleavage. It has two cleavage planes at 86 and 94 degrees. You can kind of see the corners in it. But when you start looking at other pieces, you're not really seeing that nice, nearly square angle that we should be in the cleavage. So again, some minerals, it'll be a great diagnostic property. Others, it'll be kind of difficult. That's why we have multiple properties. And again, the best way to look at cleavage is to actually break the sample, which unfortunately we cannot do. So again, asking your instructor might be a great step to understanding and identifying cleavage in the lab.